In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Namiki Emperor fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Namiki Emperor fountain pen. This is the largest pen that Namiki makes. This is the largest pen that I've ever owned. This is a huge oversized pen. Just as a comparison, this is a Mont Blanc 149, which is their biggest oversized pen here. So you can just see it is huge compared to a more normal pen. This is a Parker 51 clone. This is a gigantic pen. It took me a while to get one of these. I have the Namiki Yukari Royale, which looks very similar to this. It's more of the 149 size pen. So still a big pen, same red color, but that one has a brass uh, body that's painted in Arushi, whereas this is an ebonite body painted in Arushi. It also had a, a gold metal cap lip where this doesn't. The only trim is this Namiki gold plated clip. This is a pen that I put off buying for quite a while because I just figured it would be too big. You know, I had a Romeo Central number nine, which had a gigantic nib, a nib bigger than a 149 nib, a nib more similar in size to this, the one that's on this pen. And I ended up finding that pen too uncomfortable. It had a thin grip section. I just didn't like writing with it. So I sent the pen back to Spain where Romeo was based and they replaced it with a smaller nib, which still didn't end up working out. But at the end of the day, I figured I really want one of these. You know, I'm not going to Japan anytime soon. Let's just, let's go for it. You know, people love these. So even though I was worried about it being too big, I decided to go for it. This pen, again, like I said, is Namiki's biggest pen. This is the cheapest version, what's called the Arushi version. All the other versions have Make painting on them. So they are thousands of dollars more, in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars more. Very, very expensive pens. This is $2,000. There's a version of this pen it, with, that's still part of the Arushi line, doesn't have any Make painting, that has two rings here. I don't think it looks that good. Maybe if I ever decide to have a black one, I do that, but I think that's a little bit more expensive for those two rings. They're not a lot, but that's just one other version. Oh yeah, and this only comes in two colors, black and this red. Uh, Vermillon color. Okay, so walking through the pen, this is again like that Namiki Yukari Royale that I reviewed. I'll put a link to that up in the corner. Basically, it's a torpedo shaped pen, but it's what we call a balanced pen. That's the name for Japanese pens of this shape, big sort of eyedropper pens. And so this is an eyedropper. You can't quite see the blind cap here, most likely, uh, but it does unscrew here uh, to regulate the ink. Just again, typical balance shape. We have a serial number on the top here. We have this traditional pilot style clip, which is sort of a elongated triangle that terminates in this nice ball. I love these clips. I, I love the design of this. So taking the cap off, we can now see the section threading here, and then the section which tapers down and then flutes out. And then we have the gigantic number 50 nib here with uh, Mount Fuji, we have this oval style breather hole. And then we have like the Namiki, I don't actually know what it is. It's a, a pentagon. I don't know if it's supposed to look like a nib or what, but it says Namiki 18 karat gold, 750 B for broad. On the side, right near the section, you can see the production date, 621, so June of 21. And then there's like a Namiki or Pilot hallmark on the other side. So big nib. On the bottom here we have a, I believe it's an ebonite feed. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is painted in Arushi lacquer, where compared to the Namiki Yukari Royale, that had a red plastic feed and that feed, even when it was new, was not quite as bright red as this. This is the only pen that I've ever had that has a lacquer-covered feed. 
It's pretty cool looking, pretty special. The black version has a black one, which is also, as far as I know, lacquered. Really quite a nice looking feed. Very cool in my opinion. Now just to compare the size of the nib here. So this is a 149 nib, which is a huge oversized nib. And if you notice the grip section, it's definitely thicker than the 149 one, which I really like. The 149 is so comfortable, but it does taper down a little bit more. We'll do a proper measurements and I'll do a comparison uh, just so we can see. Cause I, I do almost wonder if this is slightly narrower at the very end. Now, like I said, this is an eyedropper. So to fill this, and I did just fill this, uh, we can unscrew you would unscrew the section that would come off and you would just use an eyedropper or a syringe and fill the barrel with ink and then to regulate the flow you would unscrew this now this is super airtight the tolerances on this are much better than on any of my Danny Trio pens and when you do turn this tight like it is here it completely shuts off the airflow so what's ever in the feed is all you have uh, to write with and so when you're writing with this you pretty much want to turn it up so it's pointed up and then unscrew this a bit just to get that ink flowing. Now, in my few months of using this pen, I've filled it three times and I haven't had any issues, any spills or anything. So I'm thinking that this pen is going to be very reliable. You know, in terms of the Japanese eyedroppers that are out there on the market, I do think that or I suspect that these Namiki ones are some of the best quality out there. And of course they charge a price for that, of course. So one other thing about this, this pen is because it is so big, it doesn't fit in most pen cases. Now it, it does fit like for instance, these Papier Nick Zenny pen trays that I carry at thepapermind.com. These hold this pen beautifully, but a normal pen tray, like I have this one here from, I think Wolf Designs makes this, but you can see, you know, I have a couple 149s in here. It doesn't fit. It sticks out. So that is definitely a problem. Now, Namiki came out with these leather pen cases, which are really nice. They are not cheap. I think this is these are $200. They're very expensive. It's basically like a giant cigar holder. And this is pretty much how I'm storing this. A cheaper option would be like a pen kimono. I'm working on getting a, a bigger pen case, longer trays, but this is the only fountain pen that I have that doesn't fit in a standard pen tray. So getting a nice case to protect it is definitely something worth doing. And I know for a long time people wanted a case that wasn't custom made and Namiki finally did release one, but it is pretty pricey. Let's do some measurements. So we're looking at about, I would say about 174, 173 long. I don't post this, obviously it's so big, but it has um, like a felt lining on the inside, like, eh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, like the Namiki Yukari Royale, just to protect the finish. One thing interesting that they say in the care instructions for this pen is that you never put water in that cap, so that will void the warranty if this gets wet. I assume because it's ebonite, it's porous in there, so it could ruin the pen. Um, but anyway, I thought that was interesting. I've never seen, I don't think I have any other pens that have that particular instruction. Now this is about 156, 157 long. So that's super long. I mean, I think we're still longer than like the whole entire Mont Blanc 149. It's pretty crazy. Now in terms of the width, I'm curious to see how this compares to the 149. Now again, it, it tapers, so I'll do the narrowest part first. It's about 13.9, so that's very wide. And then right behind the threading here, 15.1. And compared to the narrowest part, although this is pretty close to being straight, 13.8. So this is actually a little bit thinner, but anyway, very thick grip section overall. I admit that it took me some getting used to the size of this pen, to be honest. I changed my grip when I use this pen a little bit just because 
it is so big. Now, this has a little bit of ink in it. Oh, and talking about ink capacity while I'm at it, this takes about six milliliters of ink compared to like a Aurora Optima, which has a piston filling system. That holds about 1.1 milliliter. A short international cartridge holds about 7.75 milliliters. So this holds a ton of ink. And even with this broad nib, it takes me quite a bit of time to run out. So 48.12 grams. That's not a light pen. By comparison, we're at about 35. So even though it is a gigantic pen, it's not crazy heavy. There isn't a lot of metal in this pen. As far as I know, in the filling system, there is no metal. We have the gold nib, and then there's the metal for the clip, and I believe that is it. But so here, unposted, 31.61 grams. So it's not super heavy. When you pick this pen up, there's some weight to it, but it's not overpowering. You know, compared to the Yukari Royale, this doesn't feel as heavy of a pen as that, whereas that one you pick it up, you know it's a pretty much a solid metal construction, whereas this, even though it's big, you don't feel that. Now, I talked about modifying my grip slightly. I tend to move the pen up here a little bit instead of just leaving it down here. I don't know, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why I, that feels more comfortable to me, um, but once I have that down, it's a super comfortable pen. Is it? I would say it's comparable in terms of comfort to the Yukari Royale. I personally do find the Mont Blanc 149 a little bit more comfortable, but this is definitely a long writing session pen. For the writing sample, I'm gonna be doing this on a Paper Mind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook. For Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. These are awesome with fountain pens. All right, let's do the writing sample. This cap off here because I don't write with this posted. Now to let some of the ink out, I'm going to unscrew the blind cap here. And so this is a Namiki Hamper or Broad, and this is Hiroshi Zuku Shin Ryoku, I think, and. So I can try some fast writing. Okay. So this is definitely a very wet nib. I think this you know, even though it's Japanese, I think it writes like a Western broad. It's quite wide. Just as a comparison, you know, I have this Lummi Ideos in a broad. And honestly, this is even wider than, than that. So I think the nib width is definitely more of a, a Western broad. In terms of performance, now, you can kind of adjust the flow a little bit with this knob. So if I unscrewed this a bit more, it's possible we won't have these skips like we saw here. I mean, this is really me lifting up. But there is definitely, like on these longer strokes, you can see there is some skipping going on here and here. In normal writing, I don't have any problems with skipping. It writes really nicely. This is, I would say, a pretty soft nib you can get some, you know, line variation here. I don't think it's a super soft nib though. I personally don't try to really flex this ever. It writes super nice. I don't feel like I need to do that or I want to do that. There is, you know, a touch of feedback. It's a really, really enjoyable pen to write with. I've always liked Pilot nibs. This is definitely one of my absolute favorites. This actually and the Namiki Yukari Royale have really, really excellent 
nibs. Those are definitely two of my, my favorites. Now, in terms of reverse writing, well, it's actually not particularly scratchy. I mean, I wouldn't say it's smooth. Um, and you definitely get a big line difference there. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's you could do that if you wanted to. Okay, that is the Namiki Emperor writing sample. So what are my pros and cons for the Namiki Emperor fountain pen? In terms of pros, you know, we have a six milliliter ink capacity, so that holds a ton of ink. We have a really pretty simple balance design with a really nicely done Arushi lacquer over ebonite. Uh, we have the beautiful extra large number 50 nib here with Arushi lacquered feed. One of the coolest, probably the coolest nib I have in my collection. It's super nice to write with. I do think that it is very comfortable to write with. I can write with this for a long time. A great writing pen. I love it. Now, in terms of cons, there are definitely cons with this pen because it is so big. I don't think that this is going to be a good pen for everybody. I don't have giant hands and it can it does work for me pretty well. It is pretty comfortable. I do find that I, you know, when I'm doing four plus pages of writing with this thing, which it absolutely can do comfortably, I do some adjusting to my grip from my normal grip, just positioning the pen up a little bit higher for whatever reason that makes it more comfortable. But it's not going to be for everybody. This is a gigantic pen. The other con I would say is definitely the price. It's $2,000, which is an insane amount of money for a pen. It is really, really nicely made. It has a lifetime warranty. It's a pretty sweet, pretty high-end pen. It's definitely not something that I would ever bring to like the office. It just, it looks ridiculous. It's so big. <laughs> but despite that, it is nice to write with. It's an eyedropper. It does work really, really well. It's not my favorite filling system, but in this pen, it's appropriate because it's that traditional balance design. And it does hold a lot of ink. And the ink shut off valve on this works really well in the last few months that I've been using this pen. So not my favorite filling system, but it works pretty nicely. I think it's about as good as you can get with an eyedropper here. Other cons would be, again, size related. Uh, it doesn't fit in a normal pen case in my wolf pen box tray and some of my other pen trays, um, you know, the ones that are like a, a chest, it doesn't fit in there. So I had to buy the Namiki branded like leather case for this, uh, which is also not cheap, about $200, I think. Being this big, there are definitely some downsides, but it's a superb writing pen and even though I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be a good fit for me I do absolutely love it and I use it all the time so if you guys have this pen if you like this pen let me know in the comment section below and if you like this video please hit that like button and if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos please hit that subscribe button thank you so much and until next time